This is how Nighthawk Custom does the high power. It represents the pinnacle of refinement and elegance of one of the most historical and important firearms of all time. But we can't understand how great the peak of the mountain is without starting at its base. So we need to take a look back and understand where the high power has come from and where it's been to truly appreciate what Nighthawk has done. The High Power was designed by John Moses Browning, probably the most prolific firearms designer of all time. He gave birth to some of the most iconic, ageless guns ever, like the 1911, the M2 machine gun, affectionately known as the Ma Deuce, the Browning Automatic Rifle, also known as the BAR, and the Browning Auto 5 or A5, the first semi-automatic shotgun. Browning actually died while the high power was still being developed and the gun was finished by an FN firearms designer, Dudani Sev, who also designed some very impressive firearms in his time, including the FN 1949 and the FN FAL. It's safe to say that these two gentlemen forgot more about firearms design than most of us could ever hope to know, and they came together to design what would become one of, if not the most, historically relevant pistols of all time. The high power was used in World War II by both sides, the Allies and the Axis. After World War II, it went on to be one of the most widely used service pistols of all time, being adopted by more than 50 different countries' militaries and law enforcement agencies. The high power has been used in every major conflict and most of the minor ones since its inception in 1935. The gun gets its name high power from the fact that the original magazine capacity is 13 rounds. While 13 rounds seems pretty tame by today's standards, back when the high power was being thought up, it was extremely high capacity for a pistol. At the time, it used a revolutionary staggered magazine design that allowed the gun to hold a significant number of rounds while maintaining a nice slender grip. When you think about one of the earliest high capacity staggered magazine guns, I'm sure you may be thinking that it feels like you're grabbing the side of a brick. However, you'd be quite surprised. The grip actually feels really nice and slender. The grip angle is excellent. It actually feels really good, especially for a pistol from a time when ergonomics weren't necessarily the top priority in design. Another thing that I love about the high power is it came from a time where form met function. This thing has really nice slender lines, looks good, and is just straight up sexy. Even though this was designed in 1935, you can't help but to admit it looks far better than most of the newer guns that come out today. Since it was designed by the same guy, it shares some of the design aspects of the iconic 1911. After hearing all that, you may be somewhat surprised to hear there are some flaws with this near-perfect design. Most notable for me is the trigger. In the original design, there is a magazine disconnect safety, which means the gun will not fire if the magazine is ejected. This really hurts the feel of the trigger, especially for a single action pistol, because the trigger has to disengage that safety, making the vast majority of high powers having just really awful triggers, which has never been good, but in today's world with triggers getting lighter all the time, it makes the high power really show its age. Another issue is the pistol is known for having quite a bit of hammer bite. Hammer bite is when the hammer of the pistol comes back and can cut the shooter's hand upon cycling. This could have been solved by making the beaver tail larger, but for whatever reason, it wasn't made that way. The high power has been in continuous production from 1935 until Browning just ceased production in 2017, but I would say an 82 year run is a pretty good run. And really, for a gun this old, it has only been somewhat recently bested and replaced by some militaries with more modern options. 
So we have possibly one of the most historically relevant pistols of all time that has a few flaws and maybe showing its age a little. We can shelf it and keep it as a conversation piece, or you can turn to Nighthawk Custom to breathe some new life into this timeless treasure. It was a few years back that I first heard Nighthawk was customizing the high power and I was elated by the idea. Because I, like I think many people, love the high power, the drop dead classic good looks, the history, the prestige, but then when you shoot one the reality isn't quite what you had hoped for. Well neither is an original 1911, but people have been upgrading those for longer than I've been alive and with those upgrades 1911s are still amazing to shoot. However, the high power has been somewhat overlooked until now. Nighthawk has addressed all the major concerns the high power has along with more in brilliant fashion. It's hard to decide what to talk about first so let's start with the trigger and Nighthawk has fixed something that has always been a thorn in the side of the Browning high power. For starters, they remove the magazine disconnect safety in the trigger and that helps quite a bit, but their master gunsmiths at Nighthawk go through every aspect of the trigger, making this by far the best high power trigger that I have ever felt. On my scale, it's weighing in at about 3.5 pounds, but that's only half the story. The trigger has been completely smoothed out to a point that I didn't feel was capable in this platform. There's no mush or play, just the slightest amount of very clean, very smooth take up, and then it breaks like glass. The trigger in itself is a work of art, and it's the trigger that this venerable platform has always deserved. Nighthawk also improved the reset too. There's now the slightest tactile and audible reset, whereas the original had none whatsoever. I'm also a huge fan of the trigger shoe that Nighthawk is using too. It's much straighter and a little wider than the original and gives your finger a really nice place to sit and feels very good. Visually, the most dramatic change in the Nighthawk Custom High Power is the custom extended beaver tail that Nighthawk adds to the frame. This is welded on, shaped, and contoured into the frame, making it appear as if it has always been there. This is one of those touches that lets you see how good the gunsmiths at Nighthawk really are. The way this thing is molded and cut out for the hammer is nothing short of stunning, and needless to say you'll never have to worry about hammer bite from a high power that Nighthawk has worked on. Another nice touch is the hand texturing or stippling that is added to the frame and underneath the trigger guard. You'll also find this treatment on the top of the slide and the rear of the slide to cut down on glare and to add to aesthetics. I'm a huge fan of this texture and it gives you just a little bit of extra grip on the frame and is really nice. The normal high power grip is super slick and many people used to add Packmire grips go around the grip but that would add to the grip circumference and somewhat mess up a nice slim grip. So this is another area where you were stuck with the original high power and Nighthawk has remedied this. The stippling gives you just enough texture to get a better grip without adding to the grip circumference. Not only does it feel really good, I also think it's an extremely elegant touch. At my day job I'm a carpenter and this reminds me of wood grain. It looks to me like someone has sat there and carved each individual line of wood grain into the metal. No matter what it reminds you of, it's unique, elegant, and functional. They also made some big improvements to the sights. They use a Heine Slant Pro black rear sight with a 14 karat gold solid bead front sight. They actually contrast really nicely and are extremely effective. High power sights did evolve a little over the years, but look how good the new Nighthawk sights are compared to the original high power sights. They also have these beautiful Coca Bola checkered grips with the Nighthawk logo. And Nighthawk does a really nice crown on the barrel. 
The most important question, how does it shoot? Well, it shoots exactly the way you'd imagine a gun from Nighthawk Custom would. It's an absolute dream, and it shoots the way you had always wished the high power would. It's extremely smooth. Not that the original has a lot of recoil, but that extended beaver tail doesn't let the gun recoil as much and keeps the gun on target, allowing for slightly faster follow-up shots. The trigger is everything you could ever hope for. Silky smooth, light and crisp. The sights are very good, and of course, it's extremely accurate. We even suppressed the Nighthawk high power just for a little bit, because by now you know if there's a way to strap a suppressor to something, I'm going to find that way. I bring that up to say it ran flawlessly suppressed with subsonic ammo, and it ran flawlessly throughout the whole thousand round test. Sometimes you wonder about how reliable guns from premium companies like Nighthawk are, and with all those upgrades and tight tolerances, will it still run when you need it to, even if it gets a little dirty? Well, rest assured, we ran a thousand rounds with no malfunctions, a little of that suppressed, and never cleaned the gun. I would say that I would definitely trust this gun in any situation. Nighthawk is a pretty unique company. There are a lot of companies out there customizing 1911s, Nighthawk's primary focus, but they do it a little different. One gun, one gunsmith. What that means is one gunsmith at Nighthawk sees your project all the way through the process and only his hands work on your gun. Instead of having many gunsmiths each doing a little part of any particular gun, I think Nighthawk's way is a bit more personal and shows the true mastery of their smiths being able to see a gun all the way through instead of just focusing on one little part. Once the gunsmith has completed the firearm, he test fires it himself to ensure that it meets Nighthawk standards and a test target is included with the gun. After all the work and testing, since this is basically a mechanical work of art, each gun is stamped with the initials of the gunsmith who built it inside the grip panel. For instance, Alan Wyatt worked on this Nighthawk High Power, and after shooting this thing, it's apparent he definitely knows what he's doing, and is pretty much the man when it comes to high powers, and something tells me he could probably build you a 1911 too. Sadly, at least for right now, Browning has ceased production of the high power, so you can't buy a completed gun from Nighthawk. However, there were more than a million and a half high powers produced over the years, and if you can pick one of those up, Nighthawk would be glad to customize it for you. This is an amazing pistol, and it's been a privilege to be able to review it. If you're nostalgic about the epic history of the high power, but have always secretly wished it was a little more refined, this is that answer. And I think it's awesome that Nighthawk is breathing some new life into this iconic pistol. I hope you guys enjoyed that, and thank you so much for watching. If you're not already subscribed to the channel, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button right now. It really helps us out a lot, and at the same time, you'll be notified every time we have new videos out, and we got some real big ones coming, so you don't want to miss that. If you're not already following us on social media, be sure to check us out on Instagram and Facebook. It's the best way to see what we're currently working on and know what's being reviewed before the videos hit YouTube. If you guys like what we do here on Alabama Arsenal, please consider going over to our Patreon page and supporting us on Patreon. Every little bit helps. And again, guys, thank you so much for watching.